Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Um, yeah, before we get started, I'd just like you to, you know, leave a like, leave a comment, and maybe even subscribe if you feel so to be inclined to do, you know, the last one. Um, but the first two aren't optional. You have to do it. No excuses. Yeah. All right, let's get into the rest of the video. All right, so there's the launch of our first rocket of the day. Um, this one has an interesting mission. It's actually to, uh, pick up, uh, Jeb off the surface of, uh, off the surface of the moon. And, uh, yeah, it's really overdone. I will actually, it's to get Jeb and Val off of the, uh, surface of the moon. Um, mostly because we, we kind of left them stranded there in was the last episode yeah it was definitely the last episode anyway um yeah they're kind of uh stranded there on the moon um so is bill and bob but we're, we're not going to worry about them right now we just need we just need jeb so we uh we're sending you know our best tool to go and do that and that's the boy we just strapped to the end of this shoddily const constructed rocket um it's uh Sig I'm just going to call him Sigmund because I can't really see the rest of his name. I know that's not his full name. It says Sigsail. Sigsail. It's Sigmund. Um, anyway, yeah, we kind of just launched him into space on a shoddily made rocket. And we're like, oh, yeah, just, you know, recover our friends. And, yeah, so we're doing that. Um, this mission is not at all in any way, shape, or form actually, like, good for the, uh, like, it's, it was just so shoddily done, but I am actually really impressed with how it turned out. Um, so, yeah, so, barring, you know, all of the explosions and stuff like that, um, this is actually a pretty, uh, pretty good lander design, um, we almost got stranded again. Just gonna say that. Um, I, well, at least I think we did. I got really, I got really worried that we were gonna run out of fuel. Really worried. Like, you have no clue. Yeah. So um, here we go. I have to jettison the next, uh, the next part, and then I have to start landing on the, uh, on what I'm going to use is the ascent engine. Um, well, I mean, it all, it, this is the thing that also has the landing legs, but still it's, it's not exactly what I wanted to be using for the, uh, the, I didn't want to use the landing engine just yet, but, um, we'll be, we'll be good. We'll be good. We'll be fine. It's a little dark. Um, and we started sliding down the hill and yeah, it was a little rough, um, we quickly trans, uh, just, you know, started control, uh, Jeb and we flew him over to the, uh, well, nope. we flew him over to the ship. Um, he clearly had some problems, um, getting over to the, to the thing and he fell on his face and all of that. But, you know, uh, we eventually got him there. We eventually got on board. Um, and may have hit the bottom of the rocket. Um, so yeah, he got inside. Um, and then we had to send Valentina over um, to get inside. And this was a much quicker trip because I didn't hit my face on the floor. And then yeah, so I got, ins um, we got inside and then we just immediately took off. Just no waiting at all. Um, and we quickly got into uh, our... Uh, was it Mooner Injection Burn? Uh, yeah, Mooner Orbit Injection Burn. So yeah, there we go. And then now we all we had to do was uh, yeah, just make our way back home. Um, this was actually a pretty strong vehicle. Um, it was just incredibly expensive. Just way too expensive to actually, you know feasibly do regularly um 
Wow, I'm starting to feel like the scientist on the actual Apollo missions. No, um, it was just because of how I made this one, and um, I just used way too much Delta V for what I actually needed. Um, and, you know, the part where things were actively exploding wasn't exactly going to help that. So, yeah, it was a poorly designed rocket. And, honestly, we shouldn't even really be going to the moon yet. Um, uh, like, the moon's hard. Uh, the moon's hard to be landing on regularly like this, and, I mean, I've been using a, uh, been using, you know, this, uh, these, like, rockets that don't exactly have great, you know, weights to get there. Um, so yeah, there we go, we landed and we recovered them, and we're literally about to send Jeff right back into space. No time at all to save. There he goes. And um, he's going right back to another moon. Um, this time uh, it's Artemis 3. And he's on his way to... Um, he's on his way to Minmus. Uh, and we're currently just raising it. Um, I really like this, uh, this rocket that I've built. So while this mission is called Artemis 3, the rocket itself... Uh, I believe I'm calling it the Flagler 1. So yeah, the Flagler 1 rocket's actually really, really useful. Um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a great rocket. It gets us into orbit pretty well. Um, I do minimal upgrades to it into the future. Um, it's, a, it's just a great medium lift uh, vehicle. And like, I, I just love the fact that I can do this whole thing like Apollo style. Um, it's just fun to me. Um, yeah, so the entire reason why we put this guy into orbit, or not into orbit, to put him on Minmus, is because we were going to get a, like a huge, it was like a huge contract to get, um, just to put a flag on Minmus, which I've already done multiple times. And you'll see in a couple of, uh, see in a couple of episodes, I'll have, I'll have that same contract again. It's just it's just free money because I can easily go to Minmus. It's not even that expensive. Um, so yeah, like why why not? Plus, um, I'm probably gonna I'm I think soon I'm going to establish a permanent presence on Minmus, which will be pretty good. Um, yeah, like the only problem with Minmus is it's like inclination which can be it's not even that bad um like i can get there most of the time without really any corrections necessary um yeah and i i just love how this lander looks uh on its way out it's it's beautiful um i'm calling these the the, uh, the, uh, I don't think I've come up with a name for the lander type. Um, I think I'm going to name the ship type there. Uh, as of right now, it's just the Artemis, Artemis ships. Um, although I want to continue the Artemis program later on, but I'm also thinking about, you know, larger lander cans and things like that. So, of course, they need a new name. Um, but I haven't given them a new name yet. Yeah, so there's me just planning my uh, orbit node. Uh, well, or what is it? The the orbit. I don't know what it's called. All I know is it makes me orbit the uh, the uh, Minmus instead of Earth or whatever, uh, or Kerbin. Yeah, so I transferred my crew and I'm heading down to the surface of Minmus. It's nice because you barely even need that much uh, Delta V to land on Minmus. So, like, I get all the way out here, and I still have so much Delta V, and I can still land. It's it's really nice. Um, I think this time I was actually really close to pushing it, but, you know, it's, it's 
not that bad. Um, yeah, it was it's it's perfectly fine. It's pretty easy, and I'll actually be using this exact lander to go to the moon soon. So yeah, like it's 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 fine. And then there we go, <laughs> fulfilled my contract. Uh, Jeb was here. Um, and then the date, which was one, I think it was like 165 or something like that. So we do years, then days on Kerman, uh, Kerbal, just because that's, that's just, you know, the time since, uh, we established our space, space force, space thingy. Yep. That's how we quantify our time here. I got really turned around when trying to plot where to where to go on this one. In this in this episode, I made like some of the most inefficient choices for my rockets throughout the entire time. It was bad. So yeah, I had to do like an inclination change here, which it's, I mean, it's pretty easy. You just kind of aim to the side and then just burn. Um, they're not very cheap though, which, you know, doesn't exactly help. And then there we go. We got our encounter. And it's pretty much smooth sailing from here on all the way until we're back to um, the ground. Um, I mean, docking is always a pain. Um, it will become less and less of a pain as I can start to, you know, put in more monopropellant. But as of right now, it's still a pain. I really struggled at this part. Constantly going all over the place. Couldn't aim to save my life. I actually turned on the limit on how much I could maneuver and it was still way too much. Um, yeah, the whole, whole mission was a pain. I was going all over the place and I, and I accidentally caused the thing to start turning and all sorts of stuff. And I actually, actually, <laughs> I had to get my Kerbal outside of the thing Go all the way over and then control that one. It was it was just a pain. It's such a pain. Yeah. Yeah. I uh I absolutely hate like sometimes I how I mess this uh I mess this mission up pretty badly. Um, and then I think I'd do something even weirder soon. Um, uh, I don't know if it was in this episode or another one, but I do something pretty weird later on. Uh, I don't, I don't believe it was in this episode, but I think it'll be later on. Um, I've recorded way ahead as you can probably tell. Uh, yep. So then I fulfilled some of the contracts or whatever. Oh, yep, that's a yep. I did it here. I I went and docked with another one of these, just just for the fun of it, because I could. Reason why? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I used the uh, propellant of the old lander and I uh, ended up bringing us all the way up to uh, encounter the other thing and it was so... this this whole mission is just like weird and then I later found out that I didn't even need to do this to fulfill the contract it was it was just a pain it's just such a pain 
There's no reason for any of this. Um, yeah. So anyway, I go over here. I'm about to dock with the other one, and then I'll return back to Kerbin. Yeah. And I even use this canister to <laughs> go dock with the other one. Um, yeah. It's it's interesting what I did. Um, and actually, I think I may have left the experiments on board that one. Which, seeing from this, only makes me a little bit annoyed. Because now I have to go all the way back. Like, I have to take a mission out there. So I can get the science off of there which is just a pain that I don't want to deal with unless like when I go back right here then I you know actually make it back and then I transfer the experiments and everything yeah sometimes you really don't get to see my thought process in here because you know it's at like five to eight times speed the entire time um, just so these videos aren't, you know, four or five hours long, but yeah, um, I hope, I hope I transferred the science. If I didn't, that'd be so disappointing. What I need to do is I need to put a, uh, one of those science capsule thingies up on the top of the, the top of the top of the container and then just put it in there and so I can just click one button. Yeah, see, I took the science out this time, and then I put it, yeah. Okay, thank God. I don't need to go all the way out there again. Yeah, if so, that would have been super annoying and slightly stressful. And so, yeah, now I'm starting to deorbit, and then I'm going down. And, yep, now I do my, uh, my sort of deorbit burn, and then I do another one when I get closer to the planet just to slow down my velocity so I'm not just plowing through the atmosphere at, you know, 3,000 meters a second. It's a little bit more manageable at 2,500. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for thank you guys for coming. Um, yeah, uh, make sure to like, comment, or subscribe, or any of those or anything. And yeah, it's uh, I think this is episode six now. Yeah, series is going pretty good, pretty good. All right, I'll see you guys uh, in the next one. Peace.